G'day and welcome to another video with Better Picks. Hope this finds you all well. Today's video is a quick edit process within Adobe Photoshop Lightroom uh, on the process to create a panorama. It's a fairly straightforward process and very much uh, similar to uh, creating a panorama in Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw. So it should be something familiar for people who have created panoramas in those platforms. All right, let's get into it. So firstly, we have some images here that I photographed in the Australian high country uh, up at Charlotte's Pass, early uh, part of winter or just before winter uh, last year. And you can see I have 13 photographs that were shot vertically, uh, basically of the mountains. Uh, what I'm going to do first, and usually what I do with panoramas, is I'll give them a four-star rating. Now, what the star rating actually is, or what you choose to use, doesn't really matter. It's just a case of having uh, some sort of indication with your images uh, of what they're going to be used for. And for me, whenever there's images that the intention is to use them to create a panorama, I give them a four-star rating. As I mentioned, it really doesn't matter what you do. Um, the efficiency within workflows is always just finding a process that works for you and keeping consistent with that process. So for me, it's a four star rating. So what we're going to do now with all of those images selected is we're going to right click and we're going to come all the way down to photo merge. And you can see if you hover over that, it gives you some more options. HDR merge, panorama merge or HDR panorama merge. For me, I'm going to go for the middle one panorama merge and you can see there's a shortcut there as well control M so you can see it's now just working through that process of creating a preview 13 images for a panorama is quite a bit so it does take a little bit of time but as you can see it's uh, come up with that fairly well um, and that looks to have stitched together without too much issue up on the right hand side you can see there's three options under projection first one is spherical next one is cylindrical Third one is perspective. Now I find that I always get the best results out of spherical and cylindrical and that's with Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw as well. But as with anything, I always encourage you to have an experiment and just see which one works best for you. So let's try cylindrical, see what that does. Yep, that looks good. Really happy with that. So boundary warp, you can see we've got these areas around the outside of the image where you can see the source images have been stretched and moved a little bit to be able to make them stitch together seamlessly. Basically what boundary warp does is if we select and push that across, it's a slider as you can see, you can see that it's starting to push those images out and fill that boundary. All right, yep, that's pretty good. So that process uses the current images uh, and pushes them out, warps them um, to fill that extra space. If we look at fill edges, this is using a content aware process to be able to fill those edges. Um, so that's also an option worth exploring. Obviously it's dependent on the image. Um, and if that works well, then that's an option as well that it's available to you. You can apply auto settings uh, for processing the image, uh, but I find um, uh, processing and editing the final panorama uh, within your selected edit program the best way to go. Uh, you can also auto crop. So if you don't apply that boundary warp uh, or fill edges, it'll crop to within uh, or remove that white edge that was around the image. Uh, so losing a little bit of resolution there, but obviously if you shoot it well and it stitches together well, you're not going to lose a great deal. For me, I'm just going to go a little bit of boundary warp and a little bit of fill edges. There we go. That looks to have worked really well. All right, so I'm happy with that result. If we head up to the top right hand side and hit merge, you can see it will go through a process of creating that final panorama. You can see the the status line up on the top left hand side here, performing merge. As I mentioned, there's a lot of images uh, that go into this panorama, so it may take a little bit of time, but that's okay. So what I'll do is just speed up that process a little bit so we don't have to wait for the full photo merge to happen and uh, we can get straight back into editing. 
All right, and there we go. We have, as you can see, a new file that's been created. And you can distinguish that because at the end of the file name, it has Pano, and it's also a .dng. So it creates a new digital negative, uh, which is fantastic for editing because it means that we have that full raw workflow control over the image. And uh, we can certainly enjoy all the benefits that that raw workflow has and the flexibility within our edit. Thanks again for stopping by. As always, any questions in the comments below are welcome. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's provided some help. Hit the old subscribe button down below and look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.